Hello boyos, Rich Boy J here back here with another video, and this is going to be the LEGO Star Wars Mock Showcase Episode 11. This is the series I've created to highlight some of the best mocks that I've come across on the internet. If you find any of the mocks in this video impressive, all I ask is that you go to the links in the description and support the builder by giving them a like, comment, or even a follow. The first mock we're going to take a look at today is a Hoth mock by James Shields. There are so many good elements to this mock that I'm really not even sure where to start, but I think one of the things that really popped out to me is just what he decided to actually build. I feel like it's not too often you see people do a cutout of Hoth in this particular area, especially including the shield generator, so I think that his choice of just what to actually include in this mock is really nice. It's always cool to see relatively large quote unquote freeform mocks like this. I mean, it's really only freeform at the front, um, the back maybe not so much, or the sides, but it is freeform towards the front and I can definitely appreciate that. There are just so many nice builds in this mock as well. One of the first things that stuck out to me outside of the shield generator, which we'll definitely talk about a lot, but are just those Hoth turrets up front, the big white ones. I feel like it really takes a lot of time and effort to develop a design like this because those Hoth turrets are, um, they're cylindrical, but th they, there's a slight slant to them. So I guess they're technically conical in shape, which is obviously not something that is simple to translate into Lego. So for him to come up with a technique like this, using those tiles at a slant, as well as the cheese slopes at the bottom to represent the slant down there, I really just think it comes together to make an awesome looking turret. This is probably my favorite mock of this Hoth turret that I've ever seen. And um, I would want the instructions to that. I think if I was building a Hoth, I would definitely go here for some inspiration because this guy did a magnificent job on it. The other thing I really like about this mock are the trenches. They look really nice. I like the use of the wedge plates there. I think it kind of gives the impression of shaved ice almost. Like I think you, but looking at it, it, it kind of gives a feeling of, yeah, like the rebels had to like cut out big chunks of ice in order to put the trenches in there. And I think using those wedge plates for that, specifically in the way he has them oriented, they aren't just like the same wedge plates stacked up, but there's a little variety in there um, that I think makes it look really natural, as natural as um, cutting out a chunk of ice can look. I just really like the way those look. And then of course, there's the shield generators, which just look absolutely beautiful. These are probably some of the most beautiful looking shield generators I've ever seen in Lego. Um, obviously, there's Snot, which is wonderful. And there's actually a really, really interesting technique he used. He posted some pictures of it, as we'll see right here. So you can see he's basically just kind of stacking the plates on one end, then um, having a uh, a plate between them on the other end to create the angle and then there's some flex tubing in there as well that kind of helps those side curved slopes connect to it and um, all in all I think it just looks so freaking cool um, I really do wonder how someone would even come up with a technique like that I feel like you'd have to um, be thinking really critically to, to figure that out but I mean clearly it works the shield generators look awesome and um, like I said if I was building a Hoth knock I would probably look into using that type of technique for the shield generators. This guy just has so many nice little builds in here that I think combine to make an excellent looking mock. So um, if you guys are interested in building Hoth and you don't have the space to build all of Hoth, namely like a big walker and echo base, I feel like a little vignette of Hoth like this can really go a long way, especially when you put that much effort into the individual builds. I mean, there's, there's just so many nice things to say about a mock like this. So wonderful job James. The next build we're going to take a look at today is a Dio build by Hachiroku24. If you don't know who the heck Dio is, he appeared in the episode 9 trailer as well as the episode 9 panel at Star Wars Celebration. So we don't know too much about this new guy other than that he is going to be a friend of BB-8 and um, Hachiroku has taken the liberty in building him far before the movie has even come out. I always have a ton of respect for people who can you know, go out of their way and build something this early, um, not even knowing really what the heck this guy is going to do in the film but honestly this thing is just so freaking adorable like seeing this probably makes me more excited to see him in the film I remember whenever I initially saw him in that Star Wars episode 9 panel I was just like what the heck is that thing I'm um, similar to my first reaction to BB-8 but I mean looking at him more and more and even seeing him here built in the Lego it's just so cute I like I want one of these on my own but in terms of the actual build it's a really good looking build I think that the way he's kind of shaped the, the conical head looks really good using uh, the the three by three I think it is green cone for the mouth and then using some like wedge bricks and things of that sort 
uh, on the head to really just nail home that shape. And I think the antennas sticking out of the back of the head also look really, really nice. I do also like the use of those big tread pieces for his big giant wheel that he apparently rides around on. Um, I do kind of wonder if that's functional, like if he's actually able to roll it around on those uh, treads or if it's kind of stationary like that. I, if I had to guess, I'd probably assume it's probably stationary just to prevent it from being able to fall over too easily. But either way, it's a solid looking build. Finally, I do like the use of those four x four quarter circle tiles uh, for the edges of the wheels. That might be one of the most versatile parts that LEGO has released in recent history. Those things are just so useful in so many different ways. Shout out to LEGO for putting that part out. We go to the next picture, we can get a side view of him chilling with BB-8 and um, not much to say about this here, just a different view of the droid. But I think this last picture is the one that I really wanted to show you guys and that is that look, it actually scales to the other two droids that LEGO has released in sets. I always love it when builders can take into account um, the system of LEGO sets and build something that is consistent with it. If he ever puts out instructions to this thing, I am sure that it will be a hit, especially if um, Dio is beloved in the film. It uh, doesn't look like it's too huge of a build, so I don't imagine it'll cost as much as the BB-8 and probably definitely not as much as the R2, but um, people who have those other two droids, I'm sure would love to have a Dio to complement them. So all in all, great build, cute build, can't say anything bad about it. Next build we're gonna take a look at is by a builder by the name of Sebius1, and it is an Utapau mock. Man, do I sure love looking at me some Utapau mocks. This one's definitely no exception. First thing I noticed immediately when checking this thing out was that he built the big platform with the giant skeleton connected to it, and I just love the technique he used to do that. I remember watching episode three recently and looking at that and wondering like, man, how would I build that in Lego? And I think this guy just did a phenomenal job using those ball hinge joints to uh, make the skeleton for this build. So, I, I mean, I just, I just love it. Like, it looks so freaking good. Um, one of the other cool things about this mock is uh, that it is freeform, so you can see that there's a ton of like snot techniques to kind of represent the uh, innards of the mountains right below the platforms and such. And um, I really just love the way this mock flows together. I mean, and Utapau, I feel it isn't something that if you want to build, there's like one straightforward way to build it. It really is up to interpretation because we see so many different areas of Utapau and it's not really obvious how everything is oriented. So I love when people take creative liberties and do something that flows really well and I, I think that he definitely accomplished this you can see over to the left he has some of the 212 clone troopers together shooting at some battle droids which looks really nice I really do like the design for the barrier at the very edge of the platform that I guess to keep people from just walking clean off the cliffs of um, Utapau up top you can see there is a clone with a giant blaster about to presumably gonna wipe out that battle droid standing there which also just looks pretty freaking cool um, one of the other things I like about this mock is just the rock work, namely right there in the middle, like right in front of that ramp that you see. He uses a lot of those like big curved like arch pieces as well as just various tan slopes and they come together I think to make something that just looks really nice. It's also not ignore the fact that there's a lot of snot techniques in that rock work as well. Um, I always say that rock work is really characterized by the variety of pieces you use because it helps it look more natural and, and not really um, monotonous monotonous as you might say but um, yeah this guy just did a wonderful job on the front of this mod if we move on to the next picture we get an aerial view of it i really wish there were more photos of the back of this because i would really like to give a more in-depth analysis of what the droids are doing over there but this is at the moment the best picture i have of it but um it still looks really good if you look at the top right corner you can see there is a group of droids uh, gathering together presumably going down there to stop those clones and um one of the things that i kind of noticed from the first picture that you can definitely notice here is that amazing looking pattern on that big platform that Obi-Wan and General Grievous are fighting on. How cool does that look? I'm honestly not even sure how he was able to get that technique to work. I imagine there is probably something like right below the platform to keep it in, or maybe all of that is just held in by friction. I mean, who knows, but um, it looks really, really good. As someone who builds snot a lot, um, when it comes to platforms, like when I had the Fardo smock on the landing pad had to do a lot of snot there. Right now with Starkiller, still doing a lot of snot. I really do admire when people can come up with cool, unique techniques like that. Another cool thing about this is the fact that 
Um, the platform is built in snot, and I'm really impressed by the, uh, the the lining around the platform. So you can see that the platform itself is like dark gray, but then around it, he uses like um, hinge pieces to kind of be like, a, I guess an outline to that platform. And it really just fits around it almost perfectly. And then like there's parts of the platform that have hinge pieces sticking out as well to allow that outline to connect to it. Um, all in all, it just looks like a lot of really smart building techniques. And I mean, I can sit here and try to break it down, but it really is, is just something you have to, to understand. And um, I'm just thoroughly impressed by that. And um, the same goes actually for the left side of the mock. You can see this guy is like a master at getting these outlines to fit around these uh, slope bricks. So man, wonderful job on this mock. He, I think he entered this in the Lego Ideas contest and um, I hope that he wins something from it because this is an incredible mock with a ton of really, really nice looking build techniques. And the final mock we're gonna take a look at today is a phenomenal Docking Bay 94 mock by Lego Clone 123. Before I get into the mock, I just wanna say this guy is an absolute legend. There are a few builders in the community that I like to call like the Houdinis of the community where it seems like they're kind of away from the community. They're not really doing much and then they just pop up randomly with a big, beautiful mock like this. I think that um, first Order Lego is like this, and Lego Clone 123 definitely fits that category. I had no idea he was working on this, but this is just, this is a wonderful mock. So let's dive right into it. Um, the first thing I'll talk about is this giant custom Millennium Falcon sitting up front, which in itself would be an amazing mock, but he has also built this amazing backdrop for it. And I almost feel bad calling it a backdrop because there is just so much detail put into the actual docking bay part of this mock. But um, needless to say, he obviously put a lot of attention to detail into every facet of this mock. But starting up front, you can see he built a custom UCS scale Millennium Falcon. Um, it looks like it's pretty close to minifig scale and all the details are there. Um, I particularly like about this design how smooth it is. You can see he uses the snot technique for the mandibles up front and um, wherever he could there's like tiles and such used on like the whole panels. It's kind of hard to get a good view of it just from the nature of the angle of this photo but I also really do like uh, the technique he used for those big six circles on the back. I don't know if they're exhaust, I don't know if they're intakes, whatever they are they look pretty freaking cool. Um, it's pretty similar to what Lego did on their UCS Falcon, but I, I think that this one is just a, a more smooth, refined looking Falcon. Like he has a lot of the good weathering built into it, but where Lego I think may have went too far with some of the colors they chose, for example, like sand green, I think that this one is maybe a little bit more true to what I would expect from a weathered looking Millennium Falcon. I also wanna say that the greebling on the side of this thing just looks incredible. Greebling, is always a fun thing to look at just to see um, the different uses people can find out for certain parts and this mock is definitely not an exception. Um, I, I really don't want to dive too deeply into the Griebling because there's just so many different parts used in there and I could probably talk about it all day if I really wanted but um, I would simply say that he did a wonderful job on that as well. I think I also just admire the fact that he wanted to take the time to build a custom Falcon. Um, I haven't talked to him too much about this mock so I'd love to know um, what maybe inspired it if, if it was the case that he was going to build a Falcon anyway and that inspired him to just do the docking bay or if he wanted to do the docking bay and realized he needed a Falcon in it and rather than just you know getting the UCS Falcon he wanted to build the whole thing himself either way I have tons of respect for him on this mock um, but moving past the Falcon because I don't want to get hung up on that thing for too long um, I really do love the scene of the stormtroopers over there on the left side coming in uh, through the little covering um, you can see that there are a few of them that are just totally wiped out, which is always hilarious. That's probably one of my favorite parts of mocks when people just show stormtroopers obliterated because I feel like we see that so often and it is always um, very endearing to see that same thing in Lego. But um, he has the, the stormtroopers running in has actually a sand trooper in the middle of them with all custom weapons can also appreciate that. Um, one of the other things I noticed about this is that there are actually lights all throughout this mock. I think the last picture I show you will really highlight that, but if you just take a quick, quick, quick glance at it, um, the fact that he incorporated lights is a really, really big deal. If we wanna go to the next picture, we get actually a better view at those stormtroopers on that little enclave. And um, I just feel like there's so much detail in there. Like, if you'll notice all throughout this build, like none of it looks bare, none of it looks plain. Everything looks like there was at least some thought put into it. And I have 
tons of respect for him for doing that. If you look over to the right side, we got our main heroes making their way onto the Falcon. This is one of my favorite scenes in all of Star Wars. Um, it would have been really funny if he gave Han the yellow gloves that I think he's wearing in this scene, but either way, it's no big deal. That's probably a small nuance that most people don't even notice. But um, I just, I think this is just a really, really nice picture. I would honestly love to have this as like a background on something. This is just the epitome of Star Wars for me. You guys know that episode four is my favorite movie. So this picture really just brings warm feelings to my heart. Now, if we move on to the next picture, you can get a closer look at the Falcon and the details on that. You also get um, a bit of a better look at some of those rooms right behind it. Um, I like this photo because it's a good way to like observe the Falcon and really appreciate the, the fine work that he put into it but i think this next picture is the one that really gets me um it's a like head-on look at the one of the little um, rooms that he built in the docking bay and i just i love this there's like i said so much detail put into it um, I like that he used those uh, arches upwards and downwards for the doors in the back. The addition of those cargo crates are also a really nice detail. Going on to the next photo, um, you get a look at um, some of the lights that he incorporated, like I mentioned earlier. I think it's just awesome that he did that. But I really wanted to add this picture to show you once again that like every part of this mock, it just looks like there is so much attention to detail put into it. Like if you look at these walls, they're not bare. There are many different pieces incorporated into them. And that's not an easy thing to do whenever you're building something like this i mean it's really easy to just be like okay i want to finish this up i want to just build this wall up and to just um, take the most straightforward approach to it which is building bricks straight up but you can see that he took many liberties to make sure um, that the, the walls were nice and detailed so he used like the masonry bricks he has um snot bricks with the one by two tiles sticking out on the side he even uses some headlight bricks placed on their back to have like the stud sticking out of the wall which which I think is actually a pretty cool technique. Moving on to the next picture, it's really an expansion of what I was saying before, but really taken a little bit further. You can see that on this particular section of the wall, he uses um, a lot of those dark tan plates to uh, give the look of weathering, which I think is really nice. There's actually that section in the middle where that plate assembly, it's placed on its side to get um, a different like angle of snot and weathering. And I think that's really cool as well. Like I said, I build snot a lot. Um, I know kind how annoying it can be to try to figure something like that out. So I really do respect builders when they take the liberty to make that happen. If we go on to the final photo, this is uh, probably one of my favorite photos of this thing. Uh, he moves the Falcon out of the way to give you a really good look at the lights. And man, this is so freaking cool. I really wish um, we saw this docking bay in low light settings because I think that I don't know, maybe having like something, I don't know what it'd be, just maybe like a mock of some like ship landing here um, at nighttime on Tatooine with these lights just illuminating the mock would look really, really cool. Um, I hope he keeps this thing around for a while. I think like there's just so much opportunity for good mocks here. Um, if you guys don't know, this is kind of off topic, but it'll make sense. Um, there's this like game that these um, developers made. I mean, it's not really, it's, mo it's not really a game. It's more so a way for you to just walk around Tatooine but, but it's called Docking Bay 94. And the point of me bringing this up is that um, they basically recreated Mos Eisley and there's a few docking bays that look like this. And um, in many of them, there are many different ships in here. So I don't know, maybe he could take some inspiration from that and maybe do up a few more mocks with this scenery, which is a testament to how good the build is. You know, a build is good where I'm sitting here looking at it and I'm thinking, okay, like, I don't want it to be over. I want him to do more and more things with this mock. So all in all, Daniel, you did a wonderful job. Um, I'm so glad to finally talk about this on the series. And I think that you watching this right now will really appreciate this mock. So thanks for sending these photos over to me, man. And that's gonna wrap up the video this week, guys. I hope you enjoyed watching it. I feel we had an excellent lineup of mocks. And if you like them, all I ask for you guys to do is go links in the description, check out the builders, show them some support. They deserve all the recognition in the world for their incredible work. Like I always say, if you like what I do, go ahead, support the video by hitting the like button, support the channel by smashing that subscribe button, and I'll be back again very soon.